Welcome once again. We're looking today at Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And this is a classic self-help and a personal development book that explores the principles of success as well as wealth building. So we're going to first look at, you know, a brief of the different chapters that we'll be looking at in this book. The introduction introduces the concept of the secret to success and it outlines the purpose of the book. Okay. So, you know, providing a philosophy of personal achievement, right? How to attain such a personal achievement. So we look at a chapter on desire. This is where Hill emphasizes the importance of a burning desire for success. You need to desire to succeed. There must be something in you, you know, that seed that burns and is ready to blossom and bloom. It needs to be there. That's the desire. So he discusses how desire is the starting point of all achievement and introduces the idea that thoughts can be transformed into tangible riches. We look also at faith, and this chapter explores the role of faith in achieving one's goals. So faith in this case, you know, involves believing in the attainment of those desires, right? Even before tangible evidence is available. So even before you can see things come into play, you believe that that desire is going to be fulfilled in a very successful way. We also look at auto-suggestion. This is where Hill discusses the power of auto-suggestion, which involves influencing the subconscious mind through repeated affirmations and positive thinking. And so he explains how to use auto-suggestion to program the mind for success. So more like you know, telling your mind that you are going to attain that desire, right? So suggesting it, you know, planting that uh, auto-suggestion in your head and channeling things in that kind of a direction. We look also at specialized knowledge. The author stresses the significance of specialized knowledge and its role in achieving success. So he emphasizes the need to continuously acquire knowledge and skills that are related to one's goals. Okay, so it's important that you, you know, continue to develop yourself according to the to the the goal that you want, right? That goal most likely have certain skills that would make it possible. Why not work on attaining those skills? We look also at imagination. Hill discusses the creative power of imagination and how it can be harnessed to generate ideas and solutions. Remember, you need to have that desire and that desire will be fueled by an idea. It has to be a thought, right? And so that's where your imagination comes um, into play. So it encourages readers to visualize their goals and use imagination to create a clear mental picture. You know, the clearer you can make it in your head, you know, the clearer you can make it in your subconscious mind, the clearer you can set the path towards attaining it. Then also we looked at organized planning. This chapter emphasizes the importance of having a clear, well-defined plan for achieving those goals. Okay, so what plan do you have in place? How are you going to work towards achieving those goals? So Hill outlines the steps for creating and executing effective plans. Okay, you know, the certain steps that you need to take. And then also we look on a chapter on decision. Okay, this is very important. Hill discusses the power of making firm decisions and avoiding procrastination. One of the worst enemies you're going to be fighting up against is going to be yourself and your own mind, you know, thoughts of, of procrastination, you know, certain delays and distractions. So you have to make that conscious decision to work against those. So he highlights the role of decisiveness in achieving success. You need to be decisive. You need to put your mind to it. You need to ensure that it gets done. We we'll also look at persistence. Persistence is explored as a crucial factor in overcoming challenges and setbacks. So Hill discusses the importance of maintaining a positive mental attitude and persisting in the face of adversity. You know, you want to persist, you want to keep on going. So we look also at the mastermind. Hill introduces the concept of the mastermind. This is interesting. So the mastermind in this case is not just your own mind, right? But it's a harmonious group of individuals that work together towards a common goal. So it's that effective team, right? That team of minds. So together forming a mastermind. So he discusses how collective intelligence and collaboration can amplify individual success. 
We also look at the subconscious mind. This chapter delves into the role of the subconscious mind in shaping one's thoughts and actions. So he'll explain how to align the conscious and subconscious mind for greater success. We look also at the brain. Hill discusses the role of the brain in forming thought into physical reality. He explores the connection between the brain and the creative imagination. We look also at the sixth sense. The author explores the concept of the sixth sense, an, in, an intuitive faculty that transcends the other five senses. So he discusses how this sense can be harnessed for creative and intuit, intuitive problem solving. We also look at problem or rather overcoming fear, right? Yeah, like overcoming fears, especially fears of the unknown. And this is where uh, the author discusses the various forms of fear that hinder success and provide strategies for overcoming those fears. Also, we look at the subconscious mind and prayer. And in this chapter, Hill explores the connection between that subconscious mind and prayer. So Hill discusses how prayer, when done with sincerity and belief, can influence the subconscious mind in a very positive way. We also look at the brain and the mind. So this chapter then emphasizes the distinction between the brain and the mind. And Hill here encourages readers to understand the relationship between the physical brain and the non-physical mind. And so Think and Grow Rich is a timeless guide to success that combines practical advice with philosophical insights. And the book encourages readers to adopt a mindset of abundance, persistence, and continuous self-improvement to achieve their goals, which is why it is recommended that you don't just read this book once off you. This is one of those books you want to read and keep, right? And, and, and be able to reference back to, you know, revisit certain areas because it is a timeless guide okay so uh, let's look at the different chapters chapter one you know in a brief summary um we'll or rather the introduction right so chapter one is basically you know that introduction it discusses one good idea that you act on with obsessive um persistence right have that good idea okay so what is it that you would like to do have that as a good idea in your head and then you work on that idea very obsessively and very persistently you know with unwavering faith believe that you're going to get it done okay so that's what you need to achieve success one specific idea that you're going to focus on and every thought produces a vibration. And in addition, this intangible impulse can be transmuted into material reward. And most, not most, most, you know, importantly, is that all material compensation is insignificant in comparison to the unshakable possession of, you know, this knowledge. Right? You don't want to base things on just the materialistic things, but you want to base it on what goes on in your mind. You know, things that are not necessarily physically tangible, but you know, they are thought tangible. So it is the keystone of the think and the grow rich philosophy of success. Okay, it is absolutely important that you think your growth towards your richness so one of the first exercises we've come introduced to in this book is that of spending about 15 minutes every day in quiet contemplation ask infinite intelligence you know and we refer to infinite intelligence as being as god allah right um however you associate such infinite intelligence but ask right um spend time asking for that idea that will empower you to achieve your primary burning desire okay you want to have that purpose that you're always going to be working towards All right so let's look at the next section let's look at the chapter on desire So in this chapter, Desire, we're looking at, uh, uh, you know, one very, very important point that is highlighted by uh, Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, okay, that starting point. So Desire is defined as that starting point of all your achievement. So Hill argues that Desire is the starting point of all achievement because without a strong and passionate desire for something, Individuals lack that motivation and that drive that is necessary to overcome obstacles and persist in the pursuit of their goals. 
So we look also at the power of burning desire. It mustn't just be a weak desire, you know, a desire that comes and goes, but it needs to be one that is burning inside of you. So the chapter stresses that a mere wish or a hope is insufficient. What is needed is a burning desire, an intense craving for the realization of a specific goal. So this burning desire becomes the driving force that propels individuals to take consistent, persistent action. Okay, It needs to be burning inside of you so it can sort of burn you, right, or motivate you to get things done. So also we look here at the uh, definiteness of purpose, right? So you need to have that purpose. And he introduces the concept of definiteness of purpose. You know, you need to have a clear, well-defined goal that is accompanied by a strong desire. So he argues here that vague, you know, general desires are not as potent as those that are specific and clearly defined. So you want to know what exactly you want to get done. You want to know why you want to get done. Why is it important to you? You know, by when you intend to have it done, what impact it's going to have, you know, all those kind of things you need to clarify in your own head. We look also at the six steps to turn desire into gold. So Hill outlines a six-step process to transform desire into tangible results. And this process includes fixing in your mind the exact amount of money you desire, determining what you will give in return for the money, setting a definite date for acquiring the money, creating a definite plan for carrying out your desire, writing a clear and concise statement of your desire, and reading your written statement aloud twice daily. Okay? It needs to be, you know, fresh in your head. It mustn't be something that you forgot you wrote, you wrote in your diary five years ago, you know. It needs to be something that you keep on revisiting, that you're reminding yourself that you are actively working towards. So also we look at the subconscious mind and desire. Here he'll explore the relationship between the desire you know, and the subconscious mind. He suggests that a burning desire impresses the subconscious mind, which then works to transform that desire into reality by influencing one's thoughts, actions, and decisions. So then we look at overcoming obstacles. There's a strong desire, you know, or rather a strong desire acts as a powerful motivator that helps individuals overcome obstacles and challenges. So when faced with setbacks, those with a burning desire are more likely to persist and find alternative solutions. Okay, So if there is no burning desire, if a setback comes, you'll easily give up, right? Yeah, because it comes and it deflates you completely. But if you have a burning desire, a setback for you means how to find a way around it, right? You actively look for a way around it. We look also at the importance of emotional engagement. Hill emphasizes that desire must be more than a casual wish. It must involve intense emotion, emotional engagement with one's goals, you know, and it must create a magnetic force that attracts the people, the resources and opportunities that are needed to achieve those goals. So again, if it is burning inside of you, it will attract certain things. It will attract its own way uh, to have towards it towards happening because the people uh, that you need to meet will be attracted they'll come through the law of attraction will come into play right uh, the resources the ideas more ideas how to make it happen they are going to present themselves when you are constantly being fed by this or when you are feeding it with that you know with that burning uh, fire with that motivation with that burning desire and then also we look at um you know, the importance of uh, emotional engagement. Mm -hmm. So Hill emphasizes that desire must be, must be more than a casual wish, right? It must involve intense emotion. Hence, you need to understand why you intend to get this stuff. Why is it important to you? Because if it's important to you, most likely it's already burning up inside of you. So emotional engagement with one's goals creates a magnetic force that attracts the people, the resources and opportunities that are needed to achieve those goals. And so the connection between desire and faith, the chapter touches on the relationship between desire and faith. And he'll suggest that a burning desire when combined with unwavering faith 
forms a potent combination that can move mountains and overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles, right? Because it is already burning inside of you, okay? So you are able to channel your thinking, you know, and attract the ways to getting things done and overcoming certain um, uh, obstacles which previously would have appeared as insurmountable. Then we look at personal examples and anecdotes through the chapter, all right, or rather throughout the book, okay. Uh, Hill provides examples and anecdotes of individuals who achieved remarkable success through the power of desire, okay. So because they really, really, really wanted it, you know, and this was keeping them up at night. This is what they were constantly thinking about, you know, even talking about. It was deeply burning inside of them. Uh, it, it led to them getting things done. So these real life stories illustrates how a strong and persistent desire can lead to extraordinary accomplishments. Again, these are real life stories. And that's important because you get to see that, hey, if a, a real person did this and was able to accomplish this, how much more, right? Why can't I get this done, right? Um, so it motivates you already because you can see how uh, such has already happened and has been uh, a starting point of success for many people. And so um, in summary, chapter two, which is talking about desire, or you know this chapter, you can call it chapter two because the first one is the introduction. Um, this, this chapter establishes a desire as the starting point for success and it delves into the characteristics of a powerful desire, the importance of definiteness of purpose and the practical steps that individuals can take to turn their desires into tangible outcomes. So the chapter sets the foundation for the subsequent exploration of success, um, you know, or rather all these you know, important principles that we would like to understand from the book. So then we'll move on to the next chapter, which is titled Faith. And in this chapter, he'll explore the concept of faith as a crucial element in achieving success and accumulating faith. I mean, faith. Let's move on. Oh, no, well, <laughs> let's move on to the next chapter on faith. So moving on to the next chapter, the one on faith. So we look here at the role of faith. And uh, Napoleon Hill first introduces faith as the eternal elixir that gives life power and action to the impulse of thought. So he contends that faith is a fundamental element in turning desire into reality. Remember, you have the desire no matter how much it is burning inside of you. If no actions are applied, it is absolutely meaningless. It's absolutely insignificant. Something needs to happen. It can't end at the desire. It has to move on, especially if it is towards something that is worth what so faith helps towards that because how faith will help you know uh, turn that desire into a reality okay you have it in your thought you know you have it in your mind you believe it is possible you, you work towards because faith work you know works hand in glove with works so visualization and belief he'll emphasizes the importance of visualizing one's goals with faith and belief you need to see them happening the act of creating a clear mental image of the desired outcome coupled with unwavering belief that it can be achieved activates the subconscious mind and attracts the necessary resources and opportunities so we look also at the subconscious mind and faith Similar to the connection between desire and the subconscious mind, Hill argues that faith is a powerful force that influences the subconscious. When one is faith in the ability to achieve a goal, the subconscious mind works in harmony to find ways to bring that goal into reality. So we look at temporary defeats and faith. Hill acknowledges that setbacks and failures are inevitable in the pursuit of success. He contends that maintaining faith during times of adversity is crucial. Temporary defeats should be viewed as opportunities to learn and adjust rather than as permanent obstacles, right? It doesn't end at the obstacle. The obstacle is just a way, you know, that highlights what you need to improve on, right? Or better be prepared, right, to work on. But it doesn't have to end at the obstacle. 
suggestion. We we'll also look at the power of auto-suggestion. The chapter touches on the concept of auto-suggestion. Remember, we're going to be looking at this chapter properly in the following section, in the next chapters, yeah. So in this section, uh, Hill addresses that auto-suggestion involves using affirmations and repeated suggestions to influence the subconscious mind. Hill suggests that faith can be reinforced through positive self-talk and the consistent repetition of affirmations. Okay, so you can tell yourself that this is what's going to happen, right? You can see it happen. You can bring it closer to you, attract it, you know, in the right way into your life. We look also at faith and imagination. Hill explores the interplay between faith and imagination, and he argues that a combination of faith and a vivid imagination can create a powerful force for manifesting desired outcomes. Imagination helps in creating mental images that fuel faith as well as belief. So then we look at faith in overcoming fear. This is quite important as well. So Hill connects faith to the ability to overcome fear. Okay, because a lot of times we get hindered from achieving our goals because we have a certain fear. There's something that stops you, right? Or is making it harder for you to arrive where you want to be because it's this fear feeling. So fear is a common obstacle to success. And he argues that faith is the antidote, okay? Where fear comes as even an intruder, right? Uh, but as a common obstacle, faith comes and becomes that antidote. By having faith in one's ability and in the ultimate achievement of goals, individuals can conquer fear and move forward with confidence. Okay, so that faith will give you that confidence that, hey, you can get it done. And then we look at transmutation of sexual energy and faith. Hill briefly touches on the idea that sexual energy, when transmuted and harnessed, can contribute to increased faith and vitality. He suggests that individuals who redirect their sexual energy toward their goals can experience a boost in their overall faith and confidence. Now, um, you know, you can share your views on this one. What have you experienced this? Uh, what's your take on this uh, particular point? And then we look also at practical examples of faith. Throughout the chapter, Hill provides practical examples of individuals who achieved extraordinary success through unwavering faith. And the stories illustrate how faith can lead to perseverance, resilience, and ultimately the attainment of one's desires, okay? Again, those real life stories to make us believe that if they can do it, it is absolutely possible that we can do it too. And so in summary, chapter three on faith explores the transformative power of faith in achieving success. And it underscores the importance of maintaining faith in the face of challenges, using visualization and imagination to strengthen belief and leveraging auto-suggestion to influence subconscious mind positively. Faith, according to Hill, is a cornerstone in the process of turning thoughts into tangible results. So we move on to the next section, uh, the next chapter, which talks about auto-suggestion. Okay, so the next section, uh, auto-suggestion, the author explores the concept of influence the subconscious mind through self-suggestion. You insert that suggestion in the mind, right? So you sort of influence what the mind is thinking and hopefully staying in that thought. So the chapter delves into the practical application of harnessing the power of autosuggestion for personal development and success. Okay, so in this section, we look at or rather the definition of autosuggestion, right? So Hill defines autosuggestion as the agency through which individuals voluntarily feed their subconscious mind with thoughts that can influence their behavior, their actions, and outcomes. So it, it begins with you feeding those thoughts into your mind. It involves the process of self-suggestion or self-hypnosis, okay? So you you know, put that thought, you the one that are inserting, you know, the behavior you'd like um, to come out from your actions. 
So then the power of repetition, Hill emphasizes the importance of a repetition in autosuggestion. By repeatedly affirming positive thoughts and beliefs, individuals can create a mental blueprint that gradually shapes their attitudes and actions. Repetition is seen as a key element in reprogramming the subconscious mind. Again, the more you do it, you know, the more you are working on those muscles, okay? The more you are feeding and you're keeping it fresh in your head, the more you are attracting you know what it, it entails so we look at positive and negative autosuggestion the chapter distinguishes between positive and negative autosuggestion positive autosuggestion involves deliberately feeding the mind with constructive and optimistic thoughts while negative autosuggestion occurs when individuals allow negative or fearful thoughts to dominate their mental or their mental space okay if you allow the fear, you know, uh, to control you and overcome you, uh, you're working against your own capability. So you need to feed yourself with that positive autosuggestion, you know, and, uh, and, and move away from that negative autosuggestion because it also is there. So also we look at creating a positive mental attitude. Heal connects autosuggestion to the development of a positive mental attitude. By consistently using positive affirmations and suggestions, individuals can cultivate a mindset that attracts success and repels negativity. You know, imagine having your own mind doing the work, because it's already doing the work, right? But you want it to do the work that you want. So you want it to be the one that's attracting the positives and repelling the negatives. And that's why you need to auto-suggest it, plant that seed. And then using emotion in autosuggestion, he'll suggest that adding emotion and intensity to autosuggestions can amp amplify their impact. So when individuals infuse their affirmations with genuine emotion, it creates a stronger impression on the subconscious mind, making the suggestions more likely to manifest in reality. And so we look at the influence of belief. Belief is a central theme in autosuggest. You need to first believe it, right? You need to believe that you can do it in order for the thought, the autosuggestion to stay because it needs to be something that you yourself believe. And so uh, he argues that to be effective, autosuggestions must be accompanied by a genuine belief that the desired outcomes are possible. Okay? Belief serves as the catalyst for turning thoughts into concrete results. And then we look also at self-analysis and auto-suggestion. The chapter encourages readers to engage in self-analysis to identify areas where auto-suggestion can be most beneficial. By pinpointing specific goals or areas for improvement, individuals can tailor their auto-suggestions to address their unique needs and their aspirations. We look also at overcoming limiting beliefs. Now, this is absolutely important because one of the other things that stop us is, uh, you know, are those limiting beliefs that we have. And so this chapter looks at overcoming them. So when it comes to overcoming those limiting beliefs, auto-suggestion is presented as a tool for overcoming those limiting beliefs, you know, because if you consistently replace those negative or self-sabotaging thoughts, right, with positive and empowering suggestions, you can reshape the self-perception and overcome mental barriers. Again, a lot of these challenges we set for ourselves because of the barriers we set, you know. What are your barriers when it comes to, to, to money and wealth? What are your barriers when it comes to love and relationships? Those kind of barriers are able to limit you from a fulfilling life and a fulfilling experience because they trap you, right? I can't do this because this is wrong and stuff. You know, it's not about values, but if it is a limiting belief, okay? I can't have too much money because, you know, they have to be, I have to, you know, there has to be uh, some left for, for the poor, right? I can't be too rich because I'll, I'll, I'll be perceived as arrogant. So people have those kind of thoughts which become limiting belief because they form these mental barriers that stop them from, you know, even enjoying what they have worked hard and earned.
We look also at uh, combining auto-suggestion with visualization. He'll suggest combining auto-suggestion with visualization, okay? So you suggest this, you also want to see it, okay? Uh, if you can see it, you can achieve it. So creating vivid mental images of desired outcomes while affirming positive suggestions strengthens the impact of, you know, of the subconscious mind and it aligns thoughts and mental images towards a common goal, right? That common goal which you ultimately will be able to see because you know you have combined visualization in this you've attached you know your emotions in, in this like this is your burning desire this is something that you really want you know but you are presently there okay uh, consciously there so we look also at daily practice of auto suggestion again you need to be consistent you need to repeat repeat and repeat and repeat so he'll advocate for the daily practice of auto suggestion by incorporating it into a daily routine individuals can establish a consistent and powerful influence on their subconscious mind over time Again, you know, this is something, if you think about it, uh, if you even acknowledge that you have an issue with a limiting belief, right, it is something that has happened over years, okay? So in order for you to overcome it, it you won't overcome it overnight. You have built on it for years. You need to, you know, give yourself that time, have that patience to work on unbuilding it, right? Demolishing it and uh, removing all these barriers that you set for yourself in your mind that you have been working on over the years. So it's going to require a bit of patience. It's going to need consistency, right? It won't be an overnight um, phenomenon. So in summary, chapter four, which is talking about auto-suggestion, discusses uh, the practical application of influencing the subconscious mind through self-suggestion, and it introduces readers to the transformative power of repeating these positive affirmations, okay? Fostering a positive mental attitude and aligning beliefs with desired outcomes. So auto-suggestion becomes a valuable tool for shaping one's mindset and cons consequently their path to success. It begins with you and your mind, and yes, it is possible. We move on to the next chapter, which talks about specialized knowledge. So this section talking about specialized knowledge, uh, Napoleon Hill discusses the importance of acquiring and utilizing specialized knowledge as a key element in achieving success. So uh, we look at this firstly at the significance of knowledge, why you need to have knowledge, okay? Hill begins by highlighting the fun fundamental role that knowledge plays in achieving success. You need to know, there are certain things that you need to know, right? And, and, and have and work towards and earn and empower yourself on in order order to turn your dreams into a reality. So he contends that knowledge is power and that the possession of specialized knowledge can give individuals a significant advantage in their pursuits. Okay, so if you know what you're talking about, you will have that added advantage, you know, versus a person who doesn't necessarily know and just has the burning desire. So we look at general knowledge versus specialized knowledge. Hill distinguishes between general knowledge, okay, which is widely available and easily accessible, but also specialized knowledge, which is more specific, in-depth, and often unique to a particular field or industry. So specialized knowledge is presented as the key to standing out and excelling. You want to stand out. You want to excel in this particular area. That's why you need to focus on that particular area and know as much as possible about that particular area. We look also at the accumulation of knowledge. The chapter encourages readers to not just seek knowledge, but to accumulate it actively. So he'll suggest that the continuous acquisition of information related to one's field of interest is essential for staying ahead and making valuable contributions. So we look at applying knowledge in practical ways. Okay, again, if you don't, knowledge is not going to get things done. 
okay? There has to be the practicality of things. There has to be that action. So how to transform that knowledge into practical ways. So Hill emphasizes that knowledge, you know, in order for it to be valuable, must be applied in practical ways. So simply possessing information is not enough. Individuals must use their knowledge to solve problems, okay? So identify a problem. You know, see how that knowledge that you have can fix that problem, okay? Make decisions and create value, you know, in your chosen field. How you can use your knowledge to bring solutions to people. Okay, so we look at the power of collaboration. The chapter introduces the idea that collaboration with others possessing complementary specialized knowledge can lead to synergies and increased effectiveness. The concept of the mastermind introduced earlier in the book is reiterated here as a way to leverage the collective intelligence of a group. Okay, so hey, we have these different expert expertise, right? We have our different skills, our different weaknesses, our strengths, right? Why not collaborate, right? Synergy, the power of collaboration and get things done more effectively and create better impact. So we also look at in this chapter at monetary value of knowledge, okay? There is value in knowledge. Hill discusses the direct relationship between specialized knowledge and financial success. He argues that those who possess rare or specialized knowledge are often rewarded with financial compensation. And the possession of such knowledge opens doors to opportunities for wealth creation. Okay, you need to have the knowledge in order for you. And when you have the knowledge, it will open doors for you. Okay, it's going to open doors for you. You know, it's going to create a pathway for you. But you need to have, you need to work on that knowledge. You need to harness that knowledge, polish up on that knowledge. So we also look at transforming knowledge into wealth. Hill provides examples of individuals who transform their specialized knowledge into significant wealth. And so these examples illustrate how knowledge, when applied strategically, can lead to innovative solutions, products, or services that meet market demands. Remember that knowledge needs to solve a problem, okay? It needs to be a solution to a certain problem in order for it to be effective to the people uh, that it, it, it reaches. So we also look at the importance of practical education. The chapter advocates for practical education that goes beyond formal schooling. He'll suggest that individuals should seek out practical experiences and continuously learn from real world situations to enhance their specialized knowledge. So we look also at, at adaptability and flexibility. Hill touches on the importance of adaptability and flexibility in the rapidly changing world. The possession of specialized knowledge combined with the ability to adapt to evolving circumstances, positions, individuals for sustained success. Okay, and if you're able to adapt, okay, the, the knowledge that you have, you know, here's the situation. How can you adapt the knowledge that you have to suit that situation? So we look also at personal development and specialized knowledge. The chapter concludes by highlighting the connection between personal development and the acquisition of specialized knowledge. So he'll suggest that as individuals grow personally, they are capacity to acquire and apply specialized knowledge also expands. And so in summary, this chapter discusses, you know, the pivotal role that specialized knowledge plays in achieving success. It encourages readers to actively seek and apply knowledge, which is relevant to their chosen fields, highlighting the connection between knowledge, innovation, as well as financial success. And so in the next one, we look at imagination. So the next uh, section, we're looking at imagination and the author explores the creative and transformative power of the imagination in the process of achieving success. And so in this section, we begin, uh, you know, looking at imagination as this creative force, right? Emphasis on force, okay? Uh, again, if it is a force, you know that it has the ability to push through certain things, okay? Uh, so imagination is a creative force. So he introduces imagination as a force that can transform ideas into reality. You have the idea that imagination comes as a force to create, you know, the reality in your idea. So he suggests that the starting point for any achievement is the ability to visualize and conceive it in the mind. 
okay where are we always and constantly going back to we're going back to the mind we're going back to you visualizing this we're going back to you seeing that this is possible right before it actually is possible before it actually is tangible in front of you we going back to you seeing it right in your mind first so we look also at two forms of imagination. Hill differentiates between two forms of imagination, the synthetic imagination and the creative imagination. So synthetic imagination involves rearranging and reorganizing existing ideas, while creative imagination involves tapping into the universal creative source to generate entirely new concepts, okay? So you have these forms, these two forms of um, imagination that are roaming, okay? So you have the synthetic one, okay? And then you have the creative one as well. Interesting. So visualization and goal setting, the chapter emphasizes the importance of visualization in goal setting, okay? So Hill contends that individuals should vividly imagine their desired outcomes, creating a mental image that is so clear, right? And very detailed that it becomes a blueprint for future actions, okay? It must be clear in your mind. You must see it happening. You must even, you know, all your senses must be attuned with this, right? So that you can actually uh, have a way to attract, so you can attract it and you can work towards it. And it, can, it becomes a blueprint for future actions. So we look also at the subconscious mind as well as imagination. He'll explore the relationship between the imagination and the subconscious mind. So he argues that the subconscious mind is activated and influenced by vivid mental images. And through the repetition of these images, they become ingrained in the subconscious, you know, influencing behavior. Okay, so they sort of have a way to influence one's behavior. We look also at imagination in decision making. Hill discusses the role of imagination in decision making. He suggests that individuals should use their imaginative faculties to foresee the potential consequences of decisions, enabling them to make informed and strategic choices. Okay, so uh, again, how are you making those choices? Are you sticking to the decisions that you make? Imagination can assist with that because you see it because it's you know you visualize it because there's this burning desire inside of you you can work towards deciding on it we look also at imagination and innovation the chapter highlights the link between imagination as well as innovation imagination when applied creatively leads to the development of new ideas right of the in innovation so, you know, new ideas of new products, of new solutions, okay? And so he'll provide examples of successful individuals who leverage their imaginative faculties for innovation. Okay, now we call them inno innovators, right? Uh, but it began with them imagining it first, right? It began in their heads. So we look also at the power of enthusiasm. Hill connects enthusiasm to imagination, stating that enthusiasm is a key ingredient in giving life and energy to mental images. Enthusiasm combined with imagination generates a powerful force that propels individuals towards their goals. You need to be enthusiastic about this, right? Again, that burning desire is going to lead you towards that enthusiasm, okay? Because, hey, this is something you're excited about. You can't wait to share this. You can't wait to act upon this because, hey, some things you should not share, but you should act on them, right? Uh, but that enthusiasm is going to help you towards that, right? So use it, you know, it's a power as well. Then we look also at imagination and the mastermind. He'll revisit the concept of the mastermind. Remember, the mastermind is that group of, you know, uh, collective minds that come together towards a, a specific goal. And uh, he'll underscores how collective imagination, when harnessed in a harmonious group, can lead to the generation of ideas and solutions that surpass individual capabilities, okay? Yes, there's certain things that you can do by yourself but there's more that you can achieve if you combine with more you know minds that are attuned with that same idea right or that have the same vision that you have in mind 
Okay, so we also look at overcoming limiting beliefs. Now we cannot stress this one enough, okay, because they will be there. You know, they'll keep on surfacing. They'll keep on, you know, sprouting out. You need to uh, identify that, hey, this is a limiting belief. It's not the truth. It's a limiting belief of mine. It's something that I need to overcome, right? It's something that I need to be aware of so that I can overcome. So overcoming limiting beliefs, uh, Hill addresses here that imagination is presented as a tool for overcoming limiting beliefs by consciously directing the imagination toward positive and empowering mental images. Individuals can reshape their beliefs and attitudes, opening the door to new possibilities. So we look also at practical application of imagination. Hill provides practical suggestions for applying imagination, including setting aside dedicated time for creative thinking, surrounding oneself with inspiring stimuli, and consciously choosing to engage in activities that stimulate the imagination. So you want that imagination to be stimulated, right? It should not just be something that comes and goes, but it needs to be actively and constantly stimulated. And so in summary, this chapter on imagination uh, underscores the transformative power of imaginative thinking in the pursuit of success, okay? That imagination has the power to transform. And also this chapter encourages readers to cultivate both synthetic as well as creative imagination. And it emphasizes the role of mental images, visualization, in shaping behavior and outcomes. So imagination, according to Hill, is a key factor in turning dreams into reality. So we move on to the next chapter that talks about organized planning. So the next chapter, organized planning. We look at the importance of definite plans. Uh, Hill begins by stressing the significance of having definite, well thought out plans. He argues that individuals without clear plans are more likely to drift aimlessly and miss out on the opportunities that come with a focused and organized approach. So, um, we look also at the power of coordination. Hill discusses the concept of coordination, emphasizing that organized planning involves the coordination of effort and knowledge from multiple sources. So this coordination, often achieved through collaboration and teamwork, amplifies individual effectiveness. So also we look at setting goals and objectives, okay, so that why, that starting point. The chapter highlights the importance of setting specific, measurable, and time-bound goals. A lot of people will remember SMART goals, right, the acronym S-M-A-R-T, SMART goals. So those are the kind of goals that you would like to set. And he argues that clearly defined objectives provide a roadmap for action and serve as a guide for making decisions that align with long-term aspirations. So we look also at the mastermind principle uh, revisited. Hill reconnects with the mastermind principle, emphasizing how organized planning involves tapping into the collective intelligence and expertise of a mastermind group. Collaboration with others who share common goals contributes to more robust and effective plans. Like we said, in a mastermind group, your collective efforts, your collective strengths are combined to create far better you know, impact as you would by yourself. And then we look at creating a definite plan for acquiring wealth, okay? So you need to plan towards acquiring the wealth as well. Hill provides a step-by-step -step guide for creating a definite plan for acquiring wealth. This includes setting a clear goal, determining the specific benefits to be obtained, establishing a definite date for achieving the goal, outlining a detailed plan of action, and creating a written statement of the plan. Again, that statement must be written so that you know, you have used more senses, right? Um, and so that it remains something that is that is clear. You know, if you have it as a thought in your mind, it's different as than when you write it down and you receive it, right? From what you have written down, those collective thoughts put on paper. There's power in that uh, process as well. Um, okay, and then also we look at. Um, 
yeah, we look at effective decision making as well. Organize planning aids in effective decision making. So he'll suggest that having a well defined plan makes decision making easier because it provides a framework for evaluating options against predetermined goals. Okay. So we look also at persistence and organized planning. Hill connects the concept of persistence to organized planning. He argues that persistence is crucial when facing obstacles or setbacks in the pursuit of goals. A well-organized plan combined with persistence increases the likelihood of success. So also we look at the power of imagination in planning, okay? Um, you don't have to just be fixed on what you know is going to be there. What, what about what you can imagine, you know? What about some innovation in your planning as well? So the chapter discusses how imagination plays a role in the planning process. He'll suggest that individuals should use their imaginative faculties to visualize the successful execution of their plans, creating a mental image that reinforces forces belief as well as commitment. So we look also at specialized knowledge in planning. Hill reiterates the importance of specialized knowledge in the planning process. Individuals should seek out relevant information and expertise to inform their plans, ensuring that they are based on accurate and up-to-date knowledge. So your plans should not just be based on what you feel and what you hope, right? They should be based on what's current, what's happening, what's realistically the situation, okay? And if you need um, assistance on such uh, expert knowledge or even presence or skill that's where your you know your mastermind can come into play adapting plans to changing uh, circumstances he'll acknowledges that plans may need adjustment in response to changing circumstances because whether we like it or not circumstances do change so successful individuals are those who remain flexible and, and adaptable, revising their plans as needed without losing sight of their ultimate objectives. Okay, so your objectives don't need to change. You know, your plans can be adjusted. You don't have to change your overall purpose, right? But you can adjust according to the situation that you find yourself in at that time. So in summary, the chapter of organized planning, right, this is again a brief summary, it emphasizes the critical role of well-structured and well-coordinated plans towards achieving success, and it provides practical guidance on goal setting, decision making, and the integration of imagination and persistence into the planning process. So the chapter reinforces the idea that organized planning is a key component of the path to wealth as well as accomplishment, okay? You need to plan, okay? Uh, and then you need to act on your plan. The next chapter discusses decision, okay, the importance of making a decision. So the next chapter is on decision, okay, so we first look at the power of decision and he opens the chapter by emphasizing the profound impact, okay, like the impact that a single decision can have on one's life. He argues that decisions are pivotal moments that set individuals on a specific course, you know, whether it's, a, it's the right course or the wrong course, but it's a course of action that can shape your destiny. So you make one decision in a split second, which, which can either make you or break you. So you don't want to take making that decision very, very lightly. So we look also at procrastination and indecision, right? You get people that are quite indecisive, people that procrastinate, people that start things and leave them half done. So Hill discusses the detrimental effects of procrastination and indecision. So the inability to make timely decisions, he suggests, can lead to missed opportunities and a lack of progress toward one's goals. 
So we look also at the fear of criticism, right? Some people don't like to be criticized. They don't like it when you say bad things about them, okay? And Hill identifies the fear of criticism as a common factor that hinders decisive action, okay? What are people going to say if I make this bold decision, right? He argues that fear of what others might think can paralyze individuals and prevent them from making decisions that are aligned with their desires, okay? Remember, th those desires can lead you to where you need to go. So don't really, you know, shy away from them, especially if they're fulfilling desires. Yes, you get those desires which are quite uh, uh, not so good, right? Uh, but the ones that are fulfilling, the ones that are in line with your goal should be absolutely met. But now you need to be able to overcome this fear. You don't want to succumb to the fear of criticism. So the chapter provides insights into overcoming the fear of criticism. He'll suggest developing mental resilience and a strong sense of self, acknowledging that criticism is inevitable for those who take bold and decisive action. So you should not shy away from criticism, right? If people say bad things about you, sometimes you should just let them, right? And, and understand that that's the nature of people, okay? It does not necessarily mean that you should stop what you're doing. It could just mean that do it even better, right? Um, but people will speak about you. You know, so there are certain phrases or idioms that go along the lines of, um, you know, a, a moving train or a moving bus is the one that gets barked on, right? Something along those lines. But um, so if you are that moving train or that moving uh, bus or, or if you are in movement, there are certain things that are going to come and try and, you know, steal away from your activity, okay? So you need to be mindful of that and don't allow even that to stop you from progress. Okay, so um, you need to be able to, you know, continue to make that action regardless of the criticism. Yes, there are criticisms that you need to take and work on and develop on. But in other cases, you know, you just have to work with what you've got and understand that people will keep on talking. Then we look at the power of definiteness of purpose. He'll connect decisiveness to definiteness of purpose. Individuals with a clear and specific purpose are more likely to make decisions aligned with their goals as their purpose serves as a guiding principle for their actions. We look also at balanced decision making. Hill advocates for a balanced approach to decision making, acknowledging the importance of making decisions promptly while avoiding reckless or impulsive choices. Thoughtful consideration and analysis should precede decisions, but once made, they should be acted upon decisively, okay? Decisions are not things that should just be floating around in the air. They need to be some things that are acted upon. So then we look at the mastermind and decision, okay? The concept of the mastermind is revisited again in the context of decision making. He'll suggest that consulting with the mastermind group can provide valuable perspectives and insights. You don't have to have all the answers to everything. Even if you try, you won't be able to. So you should be able to uh, you know, have a certain group of people that you can ask, right? People who are experts in certain areas, ask them how do we get the start okay so that facilitates more informed and effective decision making because now you know that burden of knowing everything is not, is off your shoulder you share right with someone else what does someone else uh, think of this how does an expert in this area you know um think of this that view can be very valuable to you we look also at the power of positive decisions. Positive decisions lead to positive results. And according to Hill, emphasizes the importance of maintaining a positive mental attitude when making decisions. You know, because again, once you allow negativity, you don't want to be on that negative streak, right? Um, you don't want to be there. So negativity can cloud judgment and impede progress. All of a sudden, you're seeing, you know, uh, problems and obstacles. You're not seeing the alternatives and the solutions because your mind is clouded by negativity. So then we also look at the concept of commitment, okay? Again, commitment is when you have made a decision and you have just dedicated yourself to sticking to that decision, right? It becomes a commitment. So Hill introduces the concept of commitment as an integral part of decision-making. 
So once a decision is made, true commitment involves staying the course and persisting in the face of challenges. You know, this is important because challenges will avail themselves. They will be there. In some cases, they're there to test your commitment. Okay, and so because you're committed, you should be able to even deal with the challenges and remain firm and wavering in the decision that you have made. We look also at the influence of the subconscious mind. Hill discusses how decisions can influence the subconscious mind. And so positive decisions, when backed by belief and commitment, can program the subconscious mind to align with the desired outcomes, okay? Because, hey, they're in line with your values as well. You're not in conflict with yourself. So in summary, chapter eight, which discusses decision, um, underscores the transformative power of making timely and decisive choices in the pursuit of success. And it addresses common obstacles such as fear of criticism and procrastination while emphasizing the importance of a positive mental attitude and commitment to follow through on decisions. So the chapter serves as a call to action, encouraging readers to cultivate the habit of making decisions that propel them toward their goals. So in the next chapter, we look at persistence, okay? Persistence, you need to persist. Moving on to the next chapter. The next chapter, persistence, okay? This chapter I explore the essential quality of persistence, right, and the role that it plays in achieving success, okay? Sometimes you need to persist, right? You need to keep on striking that rock or, you know, keep on striking that 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 bark of a tree, okay? You need to persist. It won't get done the first time or the second time or even the hundredth time. Sometimes you need to keep on going. So we look at uh, this chapter on persistence. Uh, we look at the definition of persistence. According to our author here, Napoleon Hill, he defines persistence as the ability to maintain a positive mental attitude and continue taking action despite setbacks. So you maintain regardless of what setbacks come your way. So what failures come your way, what obstacles come your way, you continue, right? Uh, you know, you maintain that positive mental attitude and and you continue striking, you continue doing the action that you have determined, you've decided to do. So it is a quality that keeps individuals moving forward toward their goals. Now, that is something we all want, right? Let us pay attention. So then in this chapter, we look at the sustaining power of persistence. Here, Hill emphasizes that persistence is the sustaining force that keeps individuals on their chosen path, especially during challenging times. It is the ability to bounce back from failures and setbacks, learning from each experience, okay? You need to learn. What is it that I've learned from this, okay? And then you move on. And then we look at also at the influence of desire. Hill connects persistence to desire, stating that a strong desire is a prerequisite for true persistence. Okay, Remember, we started off with desire because desire is something that we're going to keep on addressing. And you know, a lot of these things stem from that desire. Okay, So it has a powerful influence that it plays. The more intense the desire for a specific goal, the more likely an individual is to persist in the face of difficulty. So that's why the desire should not just be a desire, but it should be one that is a burning desire. Okay, it should burn you to do these things. Okay, it should be this fiery flame that says, hey, let's get moving. We also look at defeat and temporary failure. Sometimes you work towards something, you become defeated, or there's a temporary failure. Maybe you are not well prepared. Or maybe there's something you didn't know. Maybe there was a circumstance that happened and that changed something that was very important, regardless of the situation. Hill discusses how temporary defeat is often a stepping stone to success. This is very inspirational because it is a defeat, but it's temporary if you have that burning desire still you can use that defeat as a stepping stone towards your success so he emphasizes that persistence is a 
especially crucial during times of adversity and discouragement. Okay, because you have failed, it doesn't mean you stop there. You don't, you don't stop at the failure. You need to continue, right? You'll see what you can do beyond that. You can see how the, the next step, you know, that stone that you can step on and, you know, be uplifted, how it can emerge from what initially appeared as a failure. So those who persist through temporary failure are more likely to ultimately achieve their objectives because of what persisting. We look also at the power of the mastermind in persistence. The concept of the mastermind is reintroduced in the context of persistence. He'll suggest that having a supportive network of like-minded individuals can provide encouragement and reinforcement during challenging times, contributing to sustained persistence. So we look also at the four simple steps of persistence. Heal outlines four steps to develop persistence, a definite purpose, a burning desire, a clear plan expressed in continuous action, and a positive mental attitude. So these steps are presented as a formula for cultivating and maintaining persistence. So we look also at the subconscious mind and persistence. He'll explores how persistence influences the subconscious mind. You know, if you are consistent and persistent, right, uh, if you have those kind of thoughts, you know, and actions, they are able to create a lasting imprint on your subconscious mind. And, you know, that reinforces positive beliefs and attitudes that contribute to long-term success. You'll be surprised what you can get done through that consistency and that persistency in the kind of thoughts uh, that you should have. And then we're looking at turning defeats into stepping stones. Uh, Hill encourages the reader to view defeats not as permanent failures, but as opportunities for learning and growth. Those who persistently analyze and learn from their setbacks are better equipped to navigate future challenges. So overcoming fear through persistence, Hill discusses how persistence can be a powerful tool for overcoming fear. And so by persistently facing and conquering fears, individuals develop greater courage and resilience, contributing to overall personal development. We look also at the rewards of persistence. The chapter highlights the rewards of persistence, citing examples of individuals who faced numerous challenges, but ultimately achieved remarkable success through their unwavering commitment and persistence. Okay, key word there, unwavering doesn't change. It's not influenced by the obstacles or the, you know, the failures or the setbacks. And so in summary, this chapter on persistence uh, underscores the indispensable role of persistence in the journey towards success. It provides practical insights into developing and maintaining persistence, turning obstacles into opportunities, and leveraging the power of a positive mental attitude. The chapter serves as a motivational guide for readers, encouraging them to persistently pursue their goals despite challenges as as well as setbacks. And then moving on to the next chapter, we're looking at the power of the mastermind. Okay, so the power of the mastermind. Uh, in this chapter, the author explores the concept of the mastermind and its transformative impact on personal and professional success. So, at once again, we we'll begin with the definition of the mastermind. Hill defines the mastermind as the coordination of knowledge and effort between two or more people who work toward a definite purpose in the spirit of harmony. And the mastermind amplifies individuals' intelligence and creativity through collective collaboration, through synergy, okay, putting together of strengths, you know, and uh, balancing each other's weaknesses. So, synergy and collective intelligence. Hill emphasizes the concept of synergy where the combined efforts of a group creates a collective intelligence that surpasses the sum of individual abilities. You can achieve a lot more together than you can alone, right? So the mastermind leverages the diverse skills, the knowledge and experiences of its members to achieve shared goals. So the importance of harmony. 
Keel underscores the significance of harmony within the mastermind. The group should work together with a shared vision and mutual respect, fostering an atmosphere of cooperation and support rather than competition or discord. We look also at mutual benefit. The mastermind is portrayed as a cooperative alliance for mutual benefit. Each member contributes unique strengths and perspectives and in return benefits from the collective wisdom and insights of the group. So we look at selecting the right mastermind group, right? So, you know, you know, you want to have this mastermind group, you know, you want to have the shared uh, vision and goal, you know, the impact that such synergy can have towards achieving your goals. But how do you get this? Uh, how do you select this mastermind group? So he'll provides guidance on selecting the right mastermind group. It should consist of individuals who share common goals, right? Uh, who share the same values and a positive mental attitude. Diversity in skills and backgrounds is encouraged to bring a range of perspectives to the table. So don't be afraid to have a mastermind group of people who are above you, who people of people who are your seniors, you know, of people that you know you absolutely absolutely look up to. So it doesn't mean that they have to force you to do something that you don't want to do. They don't have to empower you. I mean, they don't have to overpower you, okay? But they will empower you. They will share the kind of ideas that will be useful to you. So we look also at the influence of the subconscious mind. The chapter explores how the mastermind can influence the subconscious mind of its members. When individuals come together with a shared purpose and a positive mental attitude, their collective thoughts create a powerful force that influences their subconscious minds. Okay, so again, uh, one plus one uh, is, 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 is 11 and not just two. Or one plus one plus one, you know, is 100 and not just three. So the mastermind in action, he'll provides practical examples of successful individuals who attributed their achievements to the power of the mastermind. These examples illustrate how collaborative efforts and shared ideas can lead to innovative solutions and breakthrough. It has been done before, it can be done again. We also look at the power of combined effort. Hill highlights the exponential power of combined effort within the mastermind. Ideas are refined, plans are strengthened, and obstacles are overcome more effectively when individuals pool their resources as well as their intelligence. We look also at implementing the mastermind principle. The chapter provides guidance on implementing the mastermind principle in practical terms. This includes forming alliances with like-minded individuals, <clears throat> organizing regular meetings, and actively contributing to the collective group goals of the, of the group. Okay? So, um, you know, another point to mention here is overcoming limiting beliefs, okay? The belief that, hey, if I have a stronger uh, mastermind group, they're going to take my ideas or, you know, they're going to tell, they're going to tell me what to do and, and take over what I want, you know, those kind of thoughts. He addresses the idea that the mastermind can help individuals overcome limiting beliefs, right? In some cases, there is someone in the group who has had uh, fears that you probably currently have and so uh, discussing even on such can help you see another way better perspective on things through the support and encouragement of the group members can challenge and transcend self-imposed limitations expanding their vision of what is possible and so in summary chapter 10 which is the power of the mastermind illuminates uh, the transformative potential of collaborative effort and shared vision and it introduces the mastermind as a powerful force for achieving success emphasizing the importance of harmony mutual benefit and the combined intelligence of a harmonious group so that chapter serves as a compelling guide for readers to leverage the collective power of a well-structured mastermind for personal as well as professional advancement so we move on to the next chapter which talks of the mystery of sex transmutation
All right, so we look at the mystery of sex transmutation. In this chapter, Napoleon Hill uh, explores the concept of channeling sexual energy into productive and creative endeavors. Okay, so uh, we look here uh, first at understanding, you know, sexual energy. Hill begins by acknowledging the power and intensity of sexual energy. He suggests that this energy is one of the most potent forces available to humans and can be harnessed for creative and productive processes. So we already know of the productive processes, but did you know about the creative processes as well? So the creative power of sexual energy, Hill contends that sexual energy is closely linked to creativity, enthusiasm, and the driving force behind intense goal-oriented action. When redirected and channeled appropriately, it can fuel endeavors and contribute to personal and professional success. So we look also at transmuting sex energy into achievement. The chapter introduces the concept of transmutation, which involves converting sexual energy into other forms of energy, such as enthusiasm, creativity, and determination. When directed toward constructive goals, this energy can lead to remarkable achievements. You can imagine when people want to, you know, indulge in sexual intercourse, the kind of commitment that they have, right? The kind of passion that, you know, is roaming in their systems. So imagine being able to use that as that burning desire to achieve greatness. So we look also at the relationship between sex and genius. He'll explore the connection between sexual energy and genius. He suggests that many individuals with exceptional creative abilities have learned to transmute their sexual energy, using it as a source of inspiration and motivation. So we look at balancing passion and reason. He'll emphasizes the importance of balancing passion with reason. While harnessing the energy of desire and passion is essential, it should be combined with rational thinking and clear planning for optimal results. So we look also at creative imagination and sex transmutation. The chapter highlights the role of creative imagination in the transmutation process. By directing sexual energy into the realm of imagination, individuals can generate innovative ideas and solutions that contribute to success. We look also at the influence of emotion. Emotion, particularly strong emotion associated with sexual energy, is discussed as a catalyst for transmutation. By infusing goals and plans with intense emotion, individuals can propel themselves forward with greater enthusiasm and determination. So also we look at applying sex transmutation in daily life. Hill provides practical advice on applying sex transmutation in, in, in daily life. So this includes cultivating a burning desire for the achievement of specific goals, maintaining emotional intensity, and using imagination to visualize success. So overcoming challenges and obstacles, the chapter addresses the challenges individuals may face in harnessing sexual energy for transmutation. It suggests that by understanding the power of this energy and learning to control and direct it, one can overcome obstacles and achieve desired outcomes. So we look also at personal examples and anecdotes. Hill supports his theories with examples of successful videos or other individuals who consciously or unconsciously applied the principles of sex transmutation in their lives. These real life stories serve to illustrate the practical application of the concept. And so in summary, chapter 11, the mystery of sex transmutation. Um, explores the idea that sexual energy, when harnessed and transmuted, can be a powerful force for creativity, enthusiasm, and achievement. And Hill encourages readers to understand and channel this energy toward constructive and goal-oriented endeavors, highlighting its potential to contribute to personal and professional success. The next chapter looks at the subconscious mind.
So we look at the next chapter, the subconscious mind. And in this chapter, the author delves into the role of the subconscious mind in shaping your thoughts, your beliefs, as well as your actions. Okay, so you really want to understand how this works so you can sort of influence it and even program it. It's quite interesting. So we look at the significance of the subconscious mind. Hill begins by emphasizing the immense power and the influence of the subconscious mind on an individual's thoughts, behaviors, as well as on just general outcomes of uh, events in their lives. He suggests that understanding and harnessing this power is crucial for achieving success. So there's a link between the conscious and the subconscious. The chapter explores the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious mind. And Hill argues that the conscious mind is in the watchman, right? You know, the gatekeeper, while the subconscious mind is the storehouse of thoughts, you know, the beliefs and the experiences that shape one's reality. So the conscious mind are those thoughts, you know, that are floating, that are roaming, okay? And the subconscious mind are deeply embedded thoughts. So then we see the subconscious as a fertile garden. Hill introduces the metaphor of the subconscious mind as a fertile garden. You know, like a garden, the subconscious requires intentional cultivation to ensure that positive thoughts and beliefs are planted, allowing them to flourish and manifest in the physical world. So we look at autosuggestion and the subconscious mind. Hill revisits the concept of autosuggestion, emphasizing its role in influencing the subconscious by repeatedly suggesting positive thoughts and affirmations. Individuals can shape the content of their subconscious mind, influencing their attitudes as well as their behaviors. We look also at the role of emotions. Hill discusses how emotions play a crucial role in programming the subconscious mind. Emotional experiences and states can create lasting imprints, and by consciously directing and controlling emotions, individuals can shape the content of their subconscious. So we look also at the subconscious mind and sleep, okay? So the chapter touches on the idea that the subconscious mind is highly receptive during your sleep. So Heal encourages individuals to focus on positive thoughts and goals before bedtime. Interesting, huh? As the subconscious mind is more open to suggestion during the sleep state. So suggest this in your sleep. And when you sleep, your subconscious mind is constantly at, at work. It doesn't sleep. So the subconscious mind and decision-making, Hill explores how the subconscious mind can influence decision-making. Deep-seated beliefs and attitudes stored in the subconscious can impact choices, often without conscious awareness. So recognizing and shaping these beliefs is crucial for making positive decisions. We look also at replacing negative thoughts. He'll suggest that replacing negative thoughts with positive ones is a key strategy for reprogramming the subconscious mind. By consciously choosing to focus on uplifting and constructive thoughts, individuals can override ingrained negative patterns. Again, they're ingrained because these are patterns that you've been uh, pursuing for years, okay? And they're not necessarily fulfilling you in any way. So you need to you know, to, to get rid of them, but it may be a gradual process. Applying the subconscious mind to goal achievement, the chapter provides practical advice on applying the power of the subconscious mind to goal achievement. So this includes setting clear goals, visual, visualizing success, and maintaining a positive mental attitude to ensure that the subconscious mind is aligned with the outcomes that you desire. So we look also at the subconscious mind and personal magnetism, all right? Hill introduces the idea that individuals can enhance their personal magnetism by cultivating positive and harmonious thoughts in the, in the subconscious, okay? So this in turn can attract 
law of attraction, right? It can attract favorable circumstances as well as opportunities. And so in summary, chapter 12 uh, addresses the subconscious mind and it underscores the transformative influence of the subconscious mind on an individual's thoughts, behaviors, and overall success. And he'll provides practical insights and techniques for harnessing the power of the subconscious in offering a roadmap for individuals to cultivate a positive mental environment conducive conducive to achieving you know the goals that you most desire so one of those is you you know um, planting what you'd like in your mind uh, just before you sleep or while you're in that state of sleep okay this is this is interesting stuff so moving on to the next chapter we are almost done we're looking at the chapter of the brain okay the brain Okay, so this section, the brain, okay, so in this chapter, he'll explore the complexities, okay, complexities and potentials of the human brain and its connection to the thought process that contribute to success. So we look at uh, this chapter, which talks about the brain, the central processing unit, okay, it processes so much, all right, that your body needs and uh, my goodness, there's just so much that happens in the brain in every millisecond. So he likens the brain to a powerful central processing unit, a CPU of a computer. He suggests that just as the CPU processes and executes commands, the human brain has the capacity to process and manifest thoughts into reality. So we look at conscious and subconscious mind interaction. The chapter delves into the interaction between the conscious and subconscious mind within the brain. And so Hill underscores the importance of harmonizing conscious desires with subconscious beliefs for optimal results. And so we look at the subconscious mind's role in decision making. Hill discusses how the subconscious mind often influences decisions before they reach the conscious level. And so understanding and aligning the conscious and subconscious aspects of the mind is crucial for effective decision making. So thought vibrations in the brain. The concept of thought vibrations is introduced, suggesting that thoughts are powerful energy forms that can influence the brain's functioning. So we look at positive thoughts, you know, uh, these thoughts when properly directed can create a harmonious vibration that contributes to success. So we look also at the sixth sense, right? That thing that tells you that gut feeling, right? Hill touches on the idea of the sixth sense and intuitive faculty beyond the ordinary five senses. He suggests that the sixth sense is a collaboration between the conscious and subconscious mind, providing insights and solutions beyond logical reasoning. So we look at transmuting thoughts into physical reality. The chapter explores the process of transmuting thoughts into physical reality. He suggests that thoughts have a creative power and when combined with a strong desire, they can influence the subconscious mind to bring about tangible results. So we look at the brain and auto-suggestion. Auto-suggestion, like what we said before, is revisited, right? Uh, and, and here, Hill emphasizes the role of auto-suggestion in influencing the subconscious mind through repetitive thoughts and affirmations, okay? So how do you auto-suggest? Uh, repetition, you know, the right thoughts, affirmations, okay? As well as creating a mental environment that is conducive to success. We look at mind-body connection. Hill discusses the connection between the mind and the physical body. Positive thoughts and a harmonious mental state are believed to contribute overall health and well-being. Conversely, negative thoughts can have adverse effects on the body. So we look at infinite intelligence. Hill introduces the concept of infinite intelligence, suggesting that the human brain has the capacity to tap into a universal source of knowledge and wisdom. Connecting with this intelligence can provide insights and solutions beyond personal capabilities. 
So we look also at creative visualization. The chapter touches on the power of creative visualization. By vividly imagining desired outcomes and goals, individuals can stimulate the brain to work toward manifesting those mental images in reality. So we look also at the harmony of thought and desire. Hill emphasizes the importance of maintaining harmony between thoughts and desires. Conflicting thoughts and desires can create mental discord and hinder the brain's effectiveness in translating ideas into action. And so in summary, this chapter uh, explores the intricacies of the human brain, the complexities, right? And its role in the manifestation of thoughts into reality. And he'll provide insights into the interaction between the conscious and the subconscious mind, the power of thought vibrations, and the potential for tapping into a higher intelligence. So the chapter serves as a guide for readers to understand and leverage the capabilities of their own minds in the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so in the second last chapter in this book is the chapter on the sixth sense. The sixth sense on the next section. So this section, no, this chapter, the sixth sense, chapter 14. Um, here the author explores the concept of the sixth sense as an intuitive faculty that goes beyond the ordinary five senses and um, you know, first by defining the sixth sense, Hill begins by defining the sixth sense as a mysterious and yet very powerful faculty that transcends the other five senses. Now we know the five senses, smell, touch, you know, hearing and listening and listening and hearing is one sense, by the way. <laughs> he suggests that the sixth sense provides individuals with insights, intuitions and perceptions beyond ordinary perception. We look also at connection uh, uh, to the creative imagination, okay, how the sixth sense is connected to the creative imagination. So the chapter links the sixth sense to the creative imagination, and he'll suggest that the individuals can tap into this intuitive faculty through the creative use of their imagination, allowing them to receive inspiration and ideas that go beyond rational thinking. So we look at the role of autosuggestion. Hill revisits the concept of autosuggestion, and he suggests that by consistently feeding the subconscious mind with positive thoughts and desires through autosuggestion, individuals can enhance their intuitive abilities. And then we're looking at developing the sixth sense. How do you develop this if it's not strong enough? The chapter provides insights into developing and sharpening the sixth sense. Okay, so in, mo in some cases, a person would feel they have, you know, at some point, point to use their sixth sense, but it's not sharp enough. They're not in tune well enough. Okay, so how you can sharpen it. So he'll encourage individuals to trust their hunches, okay, trust your instincts and your gut feelings. You know, when your gut feeling just says, you know what, do this, this is what you really, really are passionate about, listen to that gut feeling. So we look at the development of this faculty in, uh, in that it requires openness to receiving guidance from the subconscious mind, okay? So you need to have that openness because in some cases you'll be praying for something and then you don't hear a response, you don't see something written in a response, but you get that gut feeling, right? That hunch, sometimes you need to listen to that and act on that. And then we look at the source of inspiration. Hill proposes that the sixth sense is a channel through which individuals can connect with the higher intelligence or infinite intelligence. The source of inspiration provides guidance and solutions beyond ordinary human capabilities. And so we look at examples of the sixth sense in action. Hill illustrates the concept with the real life examples of individuals who created or rather who credited their success to the development and application of their sixth sense. You know, so something happened and because of the hunch that they had, they acted on this hunch and they're so grateful that they did. So in some cases, if you don't act on that hunch, it could be an opportunity that you miss and some opportunities only come once, right? Or they don't come often enough. So these examples highlight instances where intuition played a crucial role in decision making as well as problem solving and generally attaining opportunities. 
We look also at harmony with the subconscious mind. The chapter emphasizes the importance of maintaining harmony between the conscious and the subconscious mind to effectively utilize the sixth sense. Okay, if you're not in harmony, if you're not well balanced, you know, you are actually in conflict with yourself and you've got bigger problems actually to deal with if that's the case. So conflicting thoughts and doubts can disrupt the intuitive flow and diminish the accuracy of insights. Okay, so if you feel you have that conflict deal with that conflict first so we look also at the application in decision making he'll explore how six senses can or rather how the sixth sense can be a valuable tool in decision making by combining intuitive insights with uh, rational thinking individuals can make more informed and effective decisions especially in situations where traditional reasoning may fall short so we look at overcoming fear and doubt. The chapter discusses how fear and doubt can block the intuitive flow of the sixth sense. Overcoming these negative emotions is essential for unblocking the full potential of this faculty and receiving clear, constructive guidance. Okay, also on this point, we look at integration with goal setting, okay, how you can use your sixth sense when setting your goals. So he'll suggest that individuals can integrate the sixth sense into their goal setting process by aligning their desires with intuitive insights. They can receive guidance on the steps to take and overcome obstacles on the path to achieving their objectives. And so in summary, chapter 14, The Sixth Sense, introduces the concept of an intuitive faculty that transcends the ordinary senses. It explores the development and application of the sixth sense in decision making, in problem solving and goal setting. So he encourages readers to trust their instincts and tap into a higher intelligence to enhance their chances of success. And moving on to the last chapter that talks of how to outwit the six ghosts of fear. And then the last one, how to outwit the six ghosts of fear. Okay, so this chapter addresses the concept of fear and its six common manifestations. Hmm. So he'll provide insights into overcoming these fears to achieve success. So the nature of fear, he'll acknowledges fear as a powerful and often paralyzing emotion that can hinder personal growth and success. He categorizes the six common fears as poverty, okay, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. So understanding the fear of poverty, he'll explore the fear of poverty as a pervasive concern that can prevent individuals from taking risks and pursuing opportunities. Overcoming this fear involves cultivating a positive mindset and focusing on abundance rather than scarcity. Okay, so the fear of poverty. Another one, conquering the fear of criticism. The chapter delves into the fear of criticism and the impact it can have on self-esteem and decision-making. He'll suggest that uh, developing self-confidence and understanding that not everyone will approve of one's choices are crucial steps in overcoming this fear. We look also at addressing the fear of ill health. The fear of ill health is discussed as a common concern that can lead to hypochondria and anxiety. Hill advocates for maintaining a healthy lifestyle and focusing on well-being rather than succumbing to irrational fears related to health. We look also at overcoming the fear of loss of love. He explores the fear of loss of love as a powerful emotional fear that can influence relationships, building self-love and recognizing that genuine relationships thrive on mutual respect rather than fear are essential for overcoming this, um, this fear. Okay, so facing the fear old age. The chapter addresses the fear of old age and the societal perceptions associated with aging. Okay, some people are just scared, devastated by the thought of aging. So he encourages a positive mindset, emphasizing that age should not be a barrier to achievement or even happiness. 
we look also at controlling um, and even confronting the fear of death. Well, you can't really control it, but you can confront it. Hill discusses the ultimate fear of death and its impact on decision making and the pursuit of goals. He suggests that recognizing the inevitability of death can provide clarity on priorities and motivate individuals to make the most of their time. We look at developing self-reliance. The chapter emphasizes the importance of developing self-reliance as a key strategy for overcoming fear. By relying on one's own abilities and judgments, individuals can build resilience and face challenges with greater confidence. Also, we look at cultivating a positive mental attitude. Hill underscores the significance of maintaining a positive mental attitude in overcoming fear. Positive thinking can counteract the detrimental effects of fear and create a mental environment that is conducive to success. So once again, we talk of auto-suggestion. Okay. Um, here, Hill revisits this, suggesting that individuals can use positive affirmations and suggestions to counteract fearful thoughts and beliefs. By consciously feeding the subconscious mind with constructive ideas, individuals can reshape their attitudes toward fear. We look also at applying the mastermind principle. The chapter advocates for the application of the mastermind principle in overcoming fear. Now that you have a mastermind group, people who know more than you, okay, you don't have to be in fear. Why not find ways to discuss even your concerns and your, and your worries and see what alternatives can come up from that? Collaborating with like-minded individuals and seeking support from a supportive network can provide strength and encouragement. And so in summary, this chapter, How to Outwit the Six Goals of Fear, provides a comprehensive exploration of common fears and strategies for overcoming them. And Hill's insights guide readers toward cultivating a positive mindset, developing resilience, and leveraging various principles discussed in the book to outwit the ghosts of fear and pursue success with confidence. <laughs>